How cute is he? Makes it all worth it, right? <laughs> um, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about my birth story. I uploaded our labor and delivery vlog, so if you haven't checked that out, I will link it above and down below. But after watching the vlog, I felt like I definitely needed to sit down and just kind of talk you through some of the things that went went on and like what happened because a lot of the things, a lot of the traumatic things that happened, obviously I didn't catch in the vlog and couldn't put in the vlog. So I just wanted to talk about that. And so many of you guys have been so incredibly sweet with your comments these past two weeks. And I just want to thank you for being so supportive of my recovery and being so supportive of Hugo in his first two weeks. And yeah, some of you have mentioned that you are yourselves are pregnant and you're you know, in the first trimester, early stages, and I don't, I mean, I want to share my real experience with you, and a lot of you have mentioned that you enjoy watching my vlogs and watching my channel because I'm honest and real, and that, I don't know, I appreciate that so much, and to me that, that means so much because that's, obviously I'm just here to share my experience with you guys and share my honest and real experience with you, and that's the good and the bad, and I'm going to be honest, I can't sugarcoat my birth story. I feel like the labor and delivery vlog is is a bit romantic, right? And you can watch that and sort of think the whole thing was, you know, kind of easy and, and wonderful. And of course it was because I got him at the end of it. But it was a very traumatic experience and a really hard, horrible experience. And I would never want to lead you guys astray and make you think that it was any, like, that it wasn't and that it was super easy. And so that's why I wanted to sit down and talk to you about this. So just a fair warning, if you are pregnant or if, you, if you've never given birth before, I don't want to tell you this story to scare you. I just want to be real and I wish I would have, I don't know, I wish I would have listened to more diverse stories. I feel like I only really listen to positive stories and I think that's good. Like you want to have a very positive mindset going into labor. You don't want to think negatively but at the same time it, it feels nice to know that like especially after having gone through the experience and being like oh my god that was horrible. <laughs> that was so horrific. Like what the heck. It's nice to hear other people's birth stories and be like oh, okay like other people had that same experience as I did. Like or other people had a really hard time and it's not just me because it's so easy to scroll through Instagram. So easy to watch YouTube videos and think like oh my gosh everyone has such an easy experience and like everyone looks like Instagram models after they give birth. How come I didn't have that experience? And again if you watch my, prank, my labor and delivery vlog I looked like a puffer fish after I gave birth and was so swollen and was the farthest thing from an Instagram model, Instagram, whatever. So yeah that's the purpose of this video I wanted to just share the real the real real with you so let's jump in to my birth story so Tuesday it was Tuesday February 27th I was home all day I was already on maternity leave and I was just kind of like doing things around the house the day prior so Monday the 26th I actually worked I, I taught dance that night and I remember teaching dance and thinking like feeling contractions, feeling uncomfortable, and just kind of knowing that like I wasn't going to be in the studio the following week. Uh, I teach dance one night a week and just kind of knew that like, you know what, I don't think I'm going to be here next week. Not necessarily because I thought I was going to give birth, but just because I felt really uncomfortable and was like really, really swollen. So anyway, Tuesday the 27th rolls around. I was like, you know what, I'm feeling kind of tired today. Like let today just be a chill day. Like let today just be like all about relaxing and my heater just turned on. So sorry if you can hear that, but let today just be about relaxing. And so I really did. Like I watched a lot of TV. I just kind of like hung out. And then around midday, I started noticing like a light pink fluid dripping um, down there. And I was like, okay, that's weird. And I had been having some mucus, some discharge, like in the days prior, but nothing, nothing major. And honestly, I thought that the series of events for birth were that your mucus plug um, your cervix starts to dilate, right? Starts to thin out a bit. And the mucus plug or the discharge that's been plugging up your cervix starts to disintegrate and starts to come out. So that you would see your mucus plug come out first and you would have your bloody show and all that stuff a week, week and a half maybe before you actually go into labor. And then you would start having contractions. You would time the contractions. At some point your water would break. You'd call your doctor. They'd tell you to stay home. And then eventually like once your contractions were about four minutes apart, you would go to the hospital. So that in my head was like the series of events. 
and the things that I was looking out for. So because I hadn't seen like my mucus plug come out or like, ha like I didn't have a bloody show yet or anything, I was like, okay, this is probably just that, like the beginning of that. So anyway, I texted my best friend who was our, my doula and I mentioned to her the leaking pink fluid and she was like, you know what, just watch it. Like, you know, it sounds, it sounds fine. Just keep an eye on it. So I put a pad in my underwear and was like, all right, like I'm just going to like keep watching TV, like keep relaxing. But every time I stood up, I would feel the dripping, but it wasn't consistent. It wasn't consistent throughout the day and it wasn't like there was no gushing or anything. It was just like a very, like every now and again, I would stand up and feel the fluid come out almost as if like, you know, I peed my pants or something. And so then it was about 6.30 at night and I went to the bathroom and I looked down at the pad and I could see like a very, very light pink fluid in comparison to the white pad. And so I texted my best friend again and I was like, um, can I send you a picture of this pad? <laughs> Which is super gross. And she was like, yeah, absolutely. And I showed it to her and she was like, you know what? You should call your doctor and just let them know. Like, even though you feel fine, cause I said to her, I was like, I, I feel fine. I felt fine all day. This hasn't been consistent. I don't feel any contractions. She was like, even though yes, like all of those things, you should still just call your doctor and let them know because this is the type of thing that they'll want to just record and have on record. So I was like, okay. So I came upstairs and I phoned the doctor's office and one of the nurses picked up and I told her that I, you know, I prefaced it. I was like, this isn't an emergency. Little did I know. I was like, this isn't an emergency, but I have been leaking some like light pink fluid. It hasn't been consistent, but I just wanted to let you know so that you could put it down in my record. And immediately she was like, she was a little, I don't know. She, I didn't think she was super friendly or warm. Granted, like, you know, she doesn't need to be, but I don't know. I felt like she was a little like abrasive with me or a little short with me, but she was like, what do you mean you're leaking fluid? And I was like, um, I don't, I've just been leaking fluid. And she was like, well, is it discharge or is it fluid? And I was like, I don't know. And at this point, like, I'm really bad with confrontation. And not that this was like confrontational, but I just I start, started feeling almost like attacked. And I was like, you know, honestly, I, I don't know. Like, it doesn't feel like discharge. It, I guess it's fluid, like it's watery. And she was like, well, well, you know, this, it could be, it could be a ruptured membrane. Like you have to, it, you have, if it's watery, like this, it could be that your water broke. Like you have to come in. How soon can you get here? And at that point I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Because my husband wasn't home. He was on his way home from Manhattan and we live about an hour north of the city. My mom wasn't home. She was at work about 45 minutes away. My dad had a few days prior um, had a really bad fall. And so he was on like some really like heavy prescription pain medication. And then my brother was sleeping. And so I was like, oh my God, there's literally no one who can come with like, this is a nightmare. And so I was like, well, I guess they could be there in 10 minutes. I live 10 minutes away. And she was like, okay, you have to come in. And I hung up the phone and I started vlogging. Again, if you guys saw the labor and delivery vlog, you'll have seen me crying. Because again, I was just so like overwhelmed and just taken aback by, I don't know, like how, how short she was with me, but then also just by like the gravitas of the whole moment of like, oh my God, I have to go to the doctor. There's no one here to come with me. It is almost seven o'clock at night. And she's telling me that my water, you know, could have potentially broke. And oh my gosh. So I texted, you know, I started texting everybody, t texted Jeff and texted my best friend and texted my parents and everything. And um, my best friend was like, oh, take the hospital bags with you just in case. But if you have watched my what's in my hospital bag videos, you'll know that my hospital bags were huge. And so I looked at the hospital bags and I was like, you know what, I can't. Um, even if even if I end up staying at the hospital, which at this point I didn't think I was going to, but even if I did, like Jeff could come home and get the bags, but I couldn't carry them. They were too big. So I literally left with just my purse and I told like I, I didn't have my husband had the car and so I told my brother I was like, is it okay if I take your car? And he was so sweet, him and his girlfriend. They were like, do you want us to come with you? And I was like, no, it's fine. Like, I'm sure it's just gonna be like a checkup and then like, it's, it won't be a big deal. I'll be right back. So he took his car, I went to the hospital and I was, uh, my, my blood pressure was through the roof because I don't handle, I just don't handle like stressful situations well. I get really anxious and like just really worked up. And 
the nurse was like when she took my blood pressure she was like oh my gosh you must be like really nervous and I was like yeah and she even said to me she was like did you come here by yourself and I was like I did I'm sorry like I just there was no one everyone's at work um so at this point like obviously like everyone was trying to figure out like how to come back how to get home quickly and they were texting me but at the same time and this is what makes this part like kind of comical but also like part of the whole like insane experience was that my phone was at 10 percent my i never let my phone get down to like 10 percent i'm always a person who like has a fully charged phone my phone was about to die and so i was texting everyone telling them like guys like my phone's gonna die i'm in the hospital like just trying to preserve as much battery as I could while at the same time vlogging because I wanted to like make sure that I like you know got all this on camera so anyway my doctor comes in she could tell that I was like so nervous she was like it's okay like let's just check let's see what's going on so I laid down she checked and she was like yeah so your water it it looks like your water broke we are going to admit you to labor and delivery downstairs like everything's gonna be fine you'll be okay and I think I probably just like went totally like white in the face and after she said that uh they gave me the admitting papers i text like i was texting everyone telling them okay i'm getting admitted um and everyone was coming and then my phone died <laughs> i went downstairs got admitted and i was probably by myself for like maybe 10 to 15 minutes which really wasn't bad because then my mom showed up and then Aaliyah, my doula showed up and then jeff came and then not too long after that my dad came and my brother and his girlfriend came and then my aunt came so it was like a whole party in the hospital room so i changed into the hospital gown obviously and just sort of got settled in and at this point i was having contractions but i didn't feel them like i didn't feel anything and they checked and i was i w was 90 percent effaced but I wasn't dilated at this point. And at first the doctor was like, okay, maybe we'll put you on Pitocin tonight. Um, or they were thinking of trying, I forget what it's called, but the thing, almost like a tampon they put up you to like jumpstart labor, to like help you dilate. Um, they were thinking of doing that as well. But eventually the doctor came in that night and she was like, you know what, we're just gonna, we're, we'll, we'll give you an Ambien, we'll let you sleep. And then we'll see, we'll check you in the morning and see how you're doing. Like, there's no need to, like, rush this. Like, let's just see how, what your body does. So I took the Ambien. Everyone left except for Jeff. And the Ambien really didn't do anything. And I thought for sure, like, the way they were talking about this Ambien, I thought I was going to, like, get knocked out and, like, have the best night's sleep ever. But <laughs> I did not. Barely slept. And around 3 a.m., I took a clip for the vlog around 3 a.m., and I genuinely, like, I don't remember doing this clip. Like, I don't remember filming it. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. Like, I remember, you know, they always say, like, oh, like, after labor, you'll totally forget everything, and, like, it'll be, like, a dream. No, I still remember everything, and I remember, like, all the terrible, like, really hard parts. But that, for some reason, that night, I don't. And maybe because it was, like, in the middle of the night and... I was so exhausted so anyway barely slept definitely started feeling contractions around like that 3 a.m. mark and then around 6 a.m. Aaliyah my doula came and Jeff woke up and it was the three of us for a few hours again like the morning was sort of a blur in terms of like timing and stuff but I remember the contractions like really starting to rev up a, a little bit and they definitely started hurting and Aaliyah was doing such a good job with just like kind of coaxing me through and and coaching me through and and just being there for me and Jeff as well but eventually it just got to the point where and I know like mentally I was mentally and I said this in my birth plan video but I wasn't opposed to drugs and normally <laughs> Aaliyah said like it was like, well, whenever anyone says they're not opposed to drugs, it normally means that they're probably going to ask for the drugs. And that's sort of the place I was in, like, leading up to the birth. I was like, yeah, I have a feeling I'm probably going to ask for the epidural, but we'll see, you know, like, we'll see how long I can go without it. But pretty early on that morning, I was like, you know what, I feel like I need the epidural for sure. Like, this, this is painful and it's only going to get worse. And I was under the impression, I was under the impression that if you got the epidural, you weren't going to feel any pain anymore like you would be done like you would have just the rest of the birth would be like a dream baby would just like come right out no big deal well i'm here to tell you boy was i wrong so anyway i got the epidural 
and it didn't hurt or anything. A lot of people say sometimes that like the epidural, getting the epidural is the most painful part and that everything after that is like a dream. Well, the epidural didn't hurt. I, you know, maybe felt a little bit of a pinch, but it was easy breezy. And then about, you know, five-ish minutes after getting the epidural, it start, like I started to feel less and less pain. The doctor did say that a side effect of getting an epidural would be itching, and I definitely experienced that. So I started feeling like intense itching all over my body, but I was like, I'll take that any day over like the pain of the contractions. So I got the epidural and I slept for about two hours, and I guess that was like the biggest pro of getting the epidural was the sleep that it afforded me, or like the time that it afforded me to then sleep because I hadn't slept the night before. So I slept for about two hours and then I, I believe like my mom showed up at some point in like the maybe like 10, 10 30. My mom and my aunt showed up and I told them I got the epidural and at that point I started like feeling that my left leg was like getting really really numb and I could start to feel like, after the nap after about two hours I could start to feel the contractions. Um, but my legs were really numb and my butt was really numb. And I was like, that's weird. Like, my lower half is super, super numb, but I can start to feel contraction. So anyway, I asked for a top up and at that point they checked me and I was four centimeters dilated. So they were like, yep, you can get another top up. So I got some more anesthesia. Is that what they call it? I guess. And again, like, stopped feeling the contractions, took another nap. And then the same thing happened. So like two hours later, I woke up. I, my left leg now at this point was like super numb, like dead weight numb, but I started feeling the contractions again. I started feeling them really strongly just on the right side. And I was like, that's bizarre. So I asked the nurse again, I was like, can I get a top up of the epidural? And she was like, well, let's, let's check you and see how far along you are before we do the top up. Um, because at this point they started telling me that even if you get the epidural, we do need to like tone it back or let it wear off so that when it comes time to push, you can feel your pushing. So that was like a fun new tidbit of information that I didn't know prior to getting the epidural and I didn't know prior to giving birth. Again, like I felt like all the information that I had been told about epidurals was like, you'll get an epidural, you'll, you won't feel pain, it'll be a wonderful experience, you'll birth your baby and like that'll be that. But the nature or the true nature of the beast was that regardless it sounded to me that I was going to be experiencing some sort of pain and discomfort fine right like I'm giving birth a baby's about to come out of like my vagina like I get it but at that point I was just like okay fine like but what was the point then of this epidural like yes I got to sleep and that sleep was so valuable and I probably couldn't have done like the rest of the labor without it but I don't know that's still sort of like a lingering question I have of like, why then di have I heard such like romantic stories about people getting epidurals and it not hurting and like them having such a great experience and here I am having had the epidural and I'm still gonna have a terrible experience? Like something about that just doesn't add up. Anyway, so it started wearing off and I started feeling a lot, a lot of pain on the right side. So they checked me and they told me I was eight centimeters dilated. And at this point they were like, oh my gosh, your contractions are so big. like." It's crazy. And I was like, okay. And then, and then they were like, okay, you're eight centimeters dilated. We can give you, but we can give you another epidural. Or like we can give you a top up. And I was like, okay. So at this point I was like really grateful because I was like, yes, I'm eight centimeters dilated. You know, eight to 10 they tell me is like nothing. I'll start pushing anytime now. And they're going to give me an epidural. Like maybe I'll be able to cheat the system and I won't feel it and it'll be great. So they gave me a top up of the epidural. And before I knew it, I was at 10 centimeters. So that I, that was a little bit confusing. And at, this, and at this point, again, my left leg was totally numb. My butt was numb. So then, honestly, I couldn't even tell you what time it was. I'm guessing it must have been around, it must have been close to 4 o'clock. Because it was around 4 o'clock that the midwife came in and they said, okay, we're going to start pushing. Because they heard me screaming through the contractions as, like, I got the epidural it must have been around 2, 2.30. By 4 o'clock, I was feeling these contractions for sure. Like, the epidural was, like, null and void. Like, yeah, I couldn't feel my left leg, but, like, forget it. I could feel the contractions. And I was, like, groaning and screaming through them. And so the midway came in, and she was like, okay, it sounds like you're ready to push. 
And I was like, okay. And so many people had kept telling me, like, alongside the whole, like, this is the series of events of which, like, labor takes place that I found was not true in my experience. They all, I was also being told that you'll feel when, you'll feel the urge to push. And when you feel the urge to push, like, that's when it's time to push. I never felt the urge to push. Never. And I especially didn't feel it at around 4 o'clock. So around 4 o'clock, they were like, okay, it sounds like you're ready to push. Let's try pushing. So the midwife was telling me to grab behind my knees and bear down. Well, that unfortunately didn't work for the first hour. <laughs> so I pushed like that from four to five and it was just so unproductive for so many reasons, but just so unproductive. So she gave me a break. It must have been like a 10, 10-ish minute break. Um, and at this point I was so exhausted and so tired and like already just feeling like over it and like couldn't believe that like couldn't believe it like couldn't believe that this was happening and couldn't believe that I was gonna gonna get through it so then a little bit after five o'clock or around five the midwife was like okay so now we're really gonna start pushing and I was like I'm sorry what have I been doing for the past hour are you kidding but at this at around the same time my um my contractions had started slowing down and becoming progressively wider apart. And at first the midwife was like, oh, like that's your body's way of, you know, giving you a rest, giving you a break. And I read that and like had heard about that. And so I was like, okay, great. But it, they were becoming too far apart and the breaks were getting too long. So they were like, okay, we're going to put a Pitocin drip in you. And I forgot to mention that before I got the epidural, they had given me Pitocin and they had started an IV drip of Pitocin on me and that's sort of I think the reason why like obviously the contractions ramped up and like I needed the epidural so they're like okay we're gonna start I think maybe they had like cut out the Pitocin anyway they're like we're gonna give you more Pitocin so that your contractions like keep revving up so the contractions started revving up I was getting the Pitocin and I was still pushing with my hands behind my knees and at this point my aunt and my mom had one of my legs Jeff and Aaliyah had the other leg and the nurse and the midwife were down below and I kept saying to the midwife I was like I can't I can't hold my legs like I can't do it and it wasn't I think there was a huge miscommunication because I think she thought that I was just saying like I can't do it because like oh I'm so exhausted I can't do it like I just can't like but I meant like I actually can't do it because my legs, you guys saw, like, my legs were so swollen. They were huge. And I physically couldn't hold them up. I couldn't do it. Like, yes, now the, the size of my legs, like post, post birth and everything, like, yeah, of course I can grab behind my legs and pull them up to my chest. But at the time, again, like with this huge belly, these huge swollen legs, I couldn't grab behind my knees. I just couldn't do it. And so I kept putting my hands behind my knees, but I wasn't like pulling on my knees pulling on my knees if that makes sense like I just couldn't and but it did it felt so nice to have everyone holding my legs again because they just felt so heavy so she kept saying like bear down bear down I didn't understand I didn't understand what muscle group to use and again this was a huge this was another reason why I think it just things weren't going well and things weren't progressing well because I didn't understand which muscle group to use and guys like I'm a Pilates instructor and a dancer I have a pretty good connection to most of my muscles and that's what I said to everyone like once labor was done and I even said this to the midwife in between contractions I was like listen I feel like I don't know where to push like I she kept putting her hand and her fingers like inside me and like where I should be pushing but I said to her I was like I don't understand which muscles to use like am I using my abs am I using my like pelvic floor that's what I don't understand and she was like it should be like you're going to the bathroom like number two and I was like okay but like even that it just nothing was clicking and everyone was like oh it's because you got the epidural like you couldn't feel those muscles and I was like mm, I don't know like it, it honestly didn't it wasn't so much that it was like mentally I didn't understand which muscles to use so I felt like I was just pushing for nothing for so long and eventually they like flipped up these like handles on the side of the hospital bed and they were like well try holding onto these handles and and bearing down and, and that definitely helped for sure and at this point I don't even know at this point maybe it was like 5 45 almost six o'clock I was exhausted it was just like the most painful 
terrible experience and then she was like well I want you to move side to side like try lying on your side and pushing and that was like again like the most uncomfortable painful position ever and it was it just felt horrible so I would go to one side try to push go to the other side try to push to no avail and I really felt like I was pushing for nothing and my best friend was like no that's okay like that's how it's supposed to feel it'll feel like you're not pushing for anything or like that you don't feel anything and the really like frustrating part and again like I didn't know this I thought babies like the canal that babies came out of was just straight like here's your uterus the baby comes right out I didn't realize that like I guess they were telling me that like the baby comes down and there's like a little bit of a lip that they have to like come down and over to then come out and he kept like I wasn't pushing hard enough or there wasn't enough force to get him over the lip so like I was pushing and they kept like everyone kept telling me like oh my gosh we can see his head we can see his head he's right there and then after I would stop pushing he would get sucked back up and that was like the most frustrating crazy thing because like you're pushing so hard every single time and you know for every you know one centimeter that he moves down your canal he gets sucked back up two centimeters and that was just horrible um and especially because like every single time everyone was like you know you're almost there this could be the last time this could be the last time and so I was pushing with like everything that I had everything that I had and I just felt like nothing was happening so at this point then I see my doctor come in and up until this point like it had just been the midwife and the nurse so all of a sudden I see the doctor walk in and I didn't think anything of it I just thought like oh like she's here great um, but I saw that she had like a very sort of stern look on her face and she looked kind of concerned but again like I thought she was just you know just there and, and it was what it was so at this point I've been pushing you know they weren't counting from four o'clock which I thought was kind of funny I don't know why but they had started counting from about five o'clock so at this point I'd been pushing for like an hour and a half and all of a sudden so I guess it was more than an hour and a half because it was around like seven o'clock that the nurse like all these nurses flooded into the room and it was around like I guess seven o'clock is like changeover time for nurses and so all of a sudden there were all these nurses in the room and any sort of modesty that I had literally went out the window because I at this point I was so hot like in between contractions I was burning up I felt like I was on fire and so I was telling everyone like get me towels get me towels get me cold towels and I had taken my hospital gown off and just had these towels dripping all over me of like cold water and it was it was funny because like for a long time I was really hot and then in between certain contractions I would get really cold and it was just this like terrible back and forth of like I'm freezing I'm hot I'm freezing I'm hot I'm freezing I'm hot so then around I want to say it was around 7 15 one of the nurses gave me uh, oxygen like an oxygen mask and told me to like use it and that that would help me even though I remember like having it and just not like it smelled like plastic to me it smelled like a lot of plastic and that like the added oxygen I guess was helping but the, the smell of plastic was really distracting what was also distracting was I felt like in between my contractions my midwife and my nurses were just like chat 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 in a way and I get that like I think they wanted to just create like a less stressful atmosphere and an atmosphere that was a little more like casual but it drove me a little bit bananas because here I was like in the most pain of my life and just like otherworldly pain and in between my contractions they were talking about like tv or like you know silly things and I was just it was so beyond it was so beyond and I remember at this point screaming many a time and asking I asked for a c-section a few times I asked for more drugs and like begging I was like please are there no drugs that you can give me like can I just have a c-section and the midwife was like no you're fine like the baby's almost here and again we were just playing that like one centimeter forward two centimeters back game so once the doctor came in though I did feel a little more focused like she was so great she was that one person who was like you know she I think she sensed in the room that things were getting a little bit crazy and a little bit out of control and oh, I forgot to mention that my dad was also in the room at this point he sort of came in and sat down and, and he is the like he can't deal with blood he can't deal with gold. like he really can't and he was like I'll just sit here I won't look I won't like 
he just sat and like literally stared at his phone or like stared to the side. I think he wanted to be there and like be there for the moment, but he couldn't watch anything. So anyway, the doctor was like, yeah, there were a lot of people in there once like after the birth, I talked to her about it and I was like, thank you for just being so focused on me and like coaching me through it. They just felt like there were so many people and she was like, yeah, there were a lot of people. And I think, you know, all the people I had in the room, plus all of the nurses, like at one point there were like 12 people in the room insane so anyway yeah at that point she kind of sensed that things were getting a little out of control and out of hand and she sort of focused in on me in between contractions and she was like listen I need you to breathe you, he's right there you just need to like really try to push as hard as you can and she gave me a few images that really helped like a few like pictures that I could really think of and and a few like movements that sort of really helped me hone in on the feeling and like what I should be doing so it's about 7 30 now again I've been pushing for about two and a half hours three and a half if you count the four to five which they weren't again I don't know why so that's 7 30 and all of a sudden my best friend Aaliyah notices that my IV the Pitocin IV has come out of my hand it was in my left hand that it had come out and at this point I didn't realize this, but my contractions had really slowed down. His heart rate had plummeted and was staying really low. And my aunt, who is a lactation consultant and a nurse, was sort of like standing to the side thinking like, why are they not taking her to a C-section? Like, this isn't, something is off. Like, he's his heart rate's getting really low. Her contractions are all of a sudden really far apart. Like, what's happening? So, Aaliyah was like, oh, her IV has come out. And if... If being at the end of labor and having your baby like almost crowning isn't enough, all of a sudden then I had nurses trying to stick me with needles in my hands and in my arms. So that IV came out. They, in between contractions now, were trying to stick me and like find another vein. They did. It came out again. This is real life. It came out again. So then they had to move to my other hand and were trying to like poke me. And if anyone's had an IV, like normally you'll get an IV like on the inside of your elbow. And that's not super painful. But IVs, I don't know, I find IVs in hands and like the side of the hand to be so incredibly painful. And so that was happening in between my contractions during like the last 10 minutes. I was getting poked and poked and poked. And part of me was like, if I could just push this baby out, then they won't have to give me another IV. Like, we won't have to worry about it. But I wasn't getting him out. He wasn't coming out. And at this point, the midwife was like, okay, we can see his head. I'm going, like, if it's okay, like, how, how would you feel if we gave you, like, a, a slight cut? A slight cut, like a slight episiotomy just to, like, help him come out. Because right now, like... It, he's just not gonna he's not gonna be able to come out without like tearing you apart sort of thing and she mentioned something about like a numbing cream all I heard was numbing cream and I was like do whatever you need to do if you're gonna put numbing cream down there and like I'm getting some sort of indirect like pain relief I'm all about it like give me that numbing cream so they put the numbing cream they gave me a little slice all this happened within like seconds at this point so honestly I was terrified of like the whole ring of fire like baby coming out tearing thing I didn't even feel it so if that's like any solace um if you're worried about that you at that point you won't even feel it because you're going to be so just miserable um I hope you're not miserable but I was so miserable and just in so much pain and discomfort and exhausted that I didn't even feel the I didn't even feel the cut I didn't even feel the tear eventually so at 7.43, he came out. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you, like, I felt him come out, but at the same time, it, like, it just all happened so fast. He came out, they put him on my chest. I said, thank you, thank you, God, that it's over, or, like, thank God it's over. God, thank you, it's over. I said that about, I said that out loud twice and just, like, felt it over and over again. Um, it was a beautiful moment when he came out. It was I was just so happy that it was over, that the whole experience was over, because honestly, I felt like the whole experience was so traumatic, so traumatic and just so taxing and awful. Um, but that wasn't the end of it, excitingly enough. I birthed the, the placenta, which was fine, except like when you're birthing the placenta, I don't know if they do this every time, but 
the midwife had to like press into my stomach as it was coming out which was pretty uncomfortable um, and then I got to get sewn up for 45 minutes so I didn't know at the time but I got a I had a fourth degree tear which is a tear from front all the way to back so the episiotomy I guess was fine in terms of like helping him come out but at the end of the day I tore anyway and tore really really badly so once he was out the doctor started stitching me back up and that was so painful it was so painful because even though I guess maybe there was some sort of numbing cream it did not feel like there was numbing cream and I remember just like you know loving that he was on my chest but barely like I couldn't focus I couldn't focus because it was so painful and so 45 minutes later she sewed like the doctor sewed me all up and I was done and the experience was done and granted like then the recovery process began and it, it's not like things got easier but that was the end of that was the end of labor and I will be so honest with you guys it was so traumatic and I and I don't use that word lightly and because you guys know like I don't I always talked about how I have such a high pain threshold and I don't know. I don't like to use like big deep adjectives or big deep words to describe events that don't warrant those words, you know? Like I think a word like traumatic is a really serious word and comes comes with a lot of heft to it and is, you know, it's my responsibility to use that word properly, but honestly, that's that's how I felt like it was and I walked away from that whole experience or got wheeled away from that whole experience thinking like, wow, if I ever do this again, and they kept telling me like, oh, if you have a second baby, it'll just slide right out because the path's already been made. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to need that in like writing from like God, because there's no way. Like I walked away from that experience thinking, okay, he's going to be an only child or I'm going to have a scheduled C-section. Not that that's going to be like any less painful, but again, like just such a traumatic experience. Like I felt I feel like if I'm, I'm going to have another child, I will need to do some sort of like, sorry, hold on, my leg is falling asleep. I will need to do some sort of counseling or I'll have to be in, I'll have to see someone or go to some sort of therapy before doing it again because it really was that traumatic. It was that traumatic. It was that horrible. And again, like I don't use those words lightly um, and I don't use those words to scare you. Uh, I wish I could tell you that it was like, a magical wonderful experience um, and obviously like having him is perfect and I love him and like it's you know it's worth it for him but it was really really hard it was really really hard and not an experience that I will do again without like some serious consideration and like without things being very different um, because at the end of the day, I walked away from that experience being terrified, being terrified of childbirth, being terrified of what had happened and just the whole thing. I, I just, I felt so scared, so scared. And it's funny because that's not how I went into the experience feeling. I, you know, went in feeling very confident in myself, confident in my doctors. And like, it's obviously it wasn't my doctor's fault or anything. Like it was just the way the cards were dealt, but yeah, it was a really really scary traumatic experience so yeah unfortunately not like the most positive birth story or positive experience but listen all things happen for a reason and I made it through I'm getting better every week and you know I don't know maybe I'll feel differently in a year or something um again like everyone always says like oh like you won't even remember a month after like you won't even remember the experience and I think it's going to take a lot more for me to forget that experience. I don't think it'll be so easy for me to just like clock it out of my memory. But I do hope, I do hope that I'm able to work through it. And I do hope that one day I'm able to, to have a positive birth experience. Um, and, and give Hugo a sibling because I would love to do that. But right now I can't even, I can't even imagine, oh my gosh. So guys, that's my birth story. I know this video was super, super long, but just felt like I wanted to share all those details with you. Let me just make sure. I like, had a bunch of notes about the experience that I wanted to mention. Just want to make sure that I, yeah. 
right? Um, I had in my notes like crying in between contractions. Yeah, I did it all. I scre I screamed. I cried. I begged for a C-section. I begged for an epidural. Like I begged for an epidural. I begged for more drugs. Like all of the, like the most traumatic things you can think of were things that I experienced and did. So. Yeah, anyway, okay, I'm gonna go now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I didn't make this video to scare anyone um, or to like deter you from having children or the whole experience. I think what's beautiful is like everyone's birth experience is different. And I just hope that, I hope that you have a more positive experience than mine. Or if you don't, at least that maybe this story made you feel a little more empowered about situations that could arise and so that you don't feel blindsided because part of me felt a little bit blindsided about you know the the events that took place that led up to my delivery um them being so out of sequence and like not what i had expected and then also the whole like epidural thing i didn't i did i just didn't feel like i knew that you still experienced pain and there you go so all right guys hugo is tired we're gonna go i love you guys so much don't forget to subscribe give this video a thumbs up and we will talk to you all really soon Bye, guys.